Ellie, in this video, we're going to discuss the TEM holders. In general, there are four types of TEM holders we use. We have the regular holders for most of the applications. We also have the cryo holders for imaging the beam sensitive materials such as biological specimens and lithium containing materials. The tomography holders which reconstruct the 2D projections back into the 3D objects. And also the in situ holders. For the in situ holders, you can apply mechanical load, you can do heating or cooling, as well as electrical bias, liquid, and gas. Let's look at each type of holders one by one. For the regular holders, we have the single tilt holder and the double tilt holder. You have the TEM specimen here, and you lower the clamp ring to secure the specimen. You can tilt the specimen along the long axis of the holder, so it's the single tilt holder. For the double tilt holder, you place your specimen here, secure the specimen with the washer and the clamp ring. You can tilt the specimen like what you do with the single tilt holder. In addition, you can tilt the specimen orthogonal to the long axis of the specimen holder. For most of the TEM holders, they are made from copper. So when you acquire EDS to do chemical analysis of your specimen, you always have a copper peak from the instrument or from the holder. To solve this problem, companies made the part, the TEM holder, that is exposed to the electron beam with beryllium. Beryllium has the atomic number 4, so it's a low Z material. From the previous video on the inelastic scattering in TEM, we learned that for low Z materials, it's less likely to emit X-ray. In this way, your chemical analysis from EDS, the energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, is less affected by the holder itself. The second type of TEM holders is the cryo holder. Cryo holders are largely used to study biological specimens without staining or fixing. However, you can also use that to study beam-sensitive material science specimens. I took this figure from a paper published in Cui Yi's group. The researchers were looking at the lithium dendrites. You first plunge freeze the specimen, then transfer the sample onto the specimen holder in liquid nitrogen. You seal the sample and transfer the specimen holder into TEM. You don't open the shutter until the vacuum is at very good level. You can see there's a jewel in the holder and the jewel is to hold the liquid nitrogen to keep the specimen at a very low temperature. The third type of TEM holder is the tomography holder. The tomography holder is somewhat similar to the single tilt holder, but it tilts at much larger angles. The regular single tilt holder usually tilts plus minus 40 degrees. For the tomography holder, you can tilt up to plus minus 75 degrees. Then you take images every one or two degrees, stack the images together, and reconstruct that into a 3D model. The example here, shown in this slide, is taken from a software called TomVis. TomVis is a free tomography reconstruction and visualization software. If you are interested in TEM tomography, I recommend you to download and use the software. This slide shows the TEM tomography work done by my student De Xing. What we are interested in was to reconstruct those nanoprecipitates in a high temperature shape memory alloy. By acquiring the Hardy stem images every 2 degrees, the Shin was able to reconstruct those precipitates in 3D. You can easily obtain the morphology information of those precipitates and you can easily calculate the volume fraction of those precipitates. Regarding the in situ TEM holders, there are many, many types. The one I had direct experience with is the in situ straining holder. The holder shown in this slide is a Hycitron Pico indenter. At the end of the holder, it is equipped with a diamond punch, and you can perform the nano compression or nano pillar compression inside TEM. The advantage of using this technique is you can correlate what you see in the microstructure to the load displacement curves. So the load jobs you see here are correlated to the strain bursts in the microstructure. Another company that sells the in situ straining holder is Scatan. Different from the Pico Indenta, where the deformation is very localized, the Gatan holder strains the entire sample. 
Professor Josh Ketcher is an expert in this area. If you are interested in this technique, you can check out his YouTube videos. In addition to mechanical loads, you can also apply heat to your specimen. There are two types of the heating holders. The one on the left heats up the entire specimen. So the TEM holder itself is like a miniature furnace. The second type of the holder utilizes the MEMS device and the heating is much more localized. In this case, it's a very small area in this chip that is heated. Companies that sell heating or cooling holders are Protochips, Hummingbirds, Den Solution, and Gatan. You can also use the liquid cell or gas cell in TEM. The thickness of the cell is usually a few hundred nanometers. For the viewing windows, usually it's made from the silicon nitride to ensure a good sealing and electron transparency. You then pass the liquid or gas in the cell to observe the chemical reaction in situ. You can also apply electrical bias on the specimen to measure the UV curve. The electrical bias holder is usually used in conjunction with other in situ capabilities. To wrap up what the in situ holder can do for your research, I got the movie file from Dr. Jordan Moen from Protochips. The movie file contains the research projects done by many, many researchers. I will excuse myself for not acknowledging all of them here. It is mesmerizing when looking at those movie files. Let's look at our TEM sketch again. Where does TEM holder go? It goes above the objective lens. There is one note I like to make here. The sketch is highly exaggerated and not to scale. In reality, the holder is very close to the objective aperture. So when you tilt the holder at a very high angle, and if you're not careful with handling the holder, you may damage the objective aperture. In the next video, we're going to put everything we have learned together and look at TEM as a whole.